back into our harness there. And I probably will put some silicone here. I just feel a little bit more better just to have a little bit more grip here, even though this is just to seal the hole because I don't want to put a lot of strand on the, the solder area. So we're going to go, once we get this on there, we're probably going to go and touch it up with some silicone because if we put silicone right now, we're going to be moving this wire around a lot. It's going to create a mess all over the place. So we'll put a silicone right afterwards. We'll, we'll pump some silicone up and we'll seal the little opening marks here. And that way when it dries, it gives a little bit more, like you could say a little hip brace for it to not yank out like that. <clears throat> so we'll put that in there. Okay, so that's secure. You can see it all lines up really. Um, we're gonna go crisscross. That will give it a little bit more diagonal support before we put the other two crossways. Um, I can feel that there. Be careful, you can definitely cross thread this easy as plastic. So you wanna go ahead and Align it into the hole as possible. Plastic are flexible so you can see it can move. Move the screw because it's it's not all the way in there and it should go in pretty smoothly. There we go. Be careful, don't over tighten it because you over tighten it, it could come out the other end or it could just strip and just spin freely. So there we go. You don't over tighten this as well because if you over tighten this one right here, it will show you over tighten it because <laughs> the screw marks will come out and you'll see a little bump here uh, or all the way. So if you don't want to over tighten. There we go, we got this one now. There we go. You do want to flush it, but you don't want to over tighten it. So you want to make sure, double check, make sure it's not coming out of this end. Okay. They're good. Looks like I can go down a little bit more. There it goes, he's snugging. Okay, there we go, that's good enough. All right, so now we got the last side here. And we're probably not gonna put this cover on here so we can get access to all our wiring. This can be put on last. So that way we can take it off, it's not in the way, and we can reach down and see our other wiring for our other uh, you know, setup. There we go, we got this on there. So that's it, we got that gauge cluster all tied in. Let's go ahead and put it back in our bike. So let me bring my uh, portable charger with me or else the phone is not gonna make it. There we go. Okay, so our gauge cluster will be coming in, coming in down like this. Okay, and it's gonna wrap around like this right there with the harness. So that's pretty much it. That's uh, And then we put our four screws here. We want to actually secure it down. But for right now, we're going to leave it loose because we're still working on other things like the alarm and stuff and wiring the alarm. But in the meantime, we could put it back in to make sure that what, what we did there didn't actually cause it to not work. So let's go and get the wiring harness from the gauge cluster. It's right above here. Let's bring it back down. And in fact, you can see here right away, I mean, you can see from top here, that this is actually already there. So. That's why the tie strap is so wonderful because it didn't actually make this uh, little screw right here just slide all the way down to its base there. So now I can go ahead and lift this guy in here. Well, no, okay, you can see it. I can lift this up more, you can really see it. But I need this, the leverage and the space to actually get in there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, I see him there, he's already got some grease in there. There, now I'm gonna go ahead and put them back in. When you put them back in, you can feel that it's going in smoothly. Like the square fits, it's not forcing it. So when it's not forcing it, you can go ahead and just start tightening it in. Make sure you don't cross thread it too. You can feel if it's going a lot more easier. There you go. Did I block you guys the whole way? Oh man. Okay, let me take it back out so I can really show you. Let me get a little more better resolution, focus on that area. Okay, you see there? You wanna make sure that square right there, when it goes in, it only goes in a certain way. It's gonna find, it's gonna find this square pattern and it's gonna go in there. So I'm, here we go. Sorry, there's all kinds of other dark stuff that's looking like it's part of it, but it's not. Okay, so, wish I could show you from underneath, but it's just a hole, like a lot of stems looking. So I'm gonna go and put it in there. See how I can insert it? 
insert it in there. See, it doesn't want to go in. That means it hasn't fallen. It hasn't found its square yet. Once it finds a square, shit just goes right in. So I'm jiggering it a little bit here. Not yet. It hasn't found a square yet. Still hasn't found a square yet. It found a square earlier. <laughs> there you go. Now I found a square. Now it's going to go in. Okay. Once it wants to go in, then you can go ahead and make sure you don't cross thread it. See there, I'm leaning a little bit. There you go. It should go in quite a bit. It should go in about maybe, what I say, a couple centimeters. At least that. See there, it goes all the way, not all the way too much, but it's still some slack there. You can see here the thread's still out there. But it still goes in quite a bit. It should go in all the way to the cap end right there. So it should go in not a centimeter. I mean, not a couple centimeters, probably a centimeter and a half. But yeah, now I can't twist anymore. You can do it by hand, that's it. Give it a good twist by hand. You know, it should be okay because it's gonna be stabilized. It's not supposed to, you know, vibrate and move on its own like that. But you never know. You can also apply blue lock tie if you're unsure of that one. There we go. We're gonna put this back under the D2. Focus on the lighting here. There we go. There we go. It wants to look like it wants to snap back on, no problem. For a D1 back. Again, I label these. These are not standard names for them. I label them just to make sure I know where their connector joints are. So okay, I put the D1 here, D2 here. I put the, you know, so it's, that's the way I do it. Okay, here we go. This one back here in this nice rubber housing here to protect it, the boot. It had the boot also in the stator end too with the uh, high torque starter motor wire and everything in there. Or I'm gonna try to get the boot in there. All right, so anyway, we can just leave it exposed because we'll probably go work on it some more. All right, so now what we're gonna do is fire the engine up and you can see that the RPM won't actually work yet until this is actually, again, connected to our blue wire here. Or we can just tap it from here since it's close by. Permanently, it's gonna be fixed here actually. So the black and white wire, which is actually on this end here, going to that blue and white wire at the stator. So this is our pickup wire that we need to tap back into our ignition coil wire as well. Even though it's gonna share as well with the same as the spark plug wire pickup to know when the spark plug is going to fire with ignition. So that's how it reads RPM. It's from all that um, pickup and ignition coil wire uh, from the pulse of this. Uh, pretty much mainly it has to do with the spark plug. It needs to pick up the revolutions uh, per, per minute on your spark plug. So here we go. We're going to fire this bad boy up again. All the engine check. Oh, I think our fuel lines on my, that's cool. You can see it from here, right? So yeah, it's laying vertical. So it's all fired up there. We're gonna go and fire this up, hold down the brake lever, turn on the teeth on. See our gauge cluster is working. We can test our left signal, test our right signal, and we can test our high beam. There we go, that's our high beam. See how more, more, much more brighter it is? You can see by the little board there in the front. Okay, and we're still using the regular, um, the original, uh, what is it? Uh, $10 HD bulb. We haven't installed the high ones in yet. We're, I'm debating between the Kara one and the other one, the $20 one, which the $20 one blew me away how bright it was. So let's fire this up. That's what it's really going after right there. That guy. Going after that guy. 
sorry, it is the yellow color, but it changes to black. I don't know why I do that. I don't know why the manufacturer did that. I didn't design the color scheme. But now, if you notice here, the RPM should work. Or it should work. We had it working, huh? Oh, did we connect this housing? No, we didn't. <laughs> All right, so let's do that. See how we are when I'm at a haze? We didn't even connect this one. How it's gonna work, huh? Okay, let's go and do that. We're gonna get power to it. Here we go. I wanna make sure it's not cross. Yeah, RPM will help you tune your scooter more. So that's why I was going by ear and, uh, and feel. That's the problem. So with the RPM gauge a little bit, it'll help you at least see where it's idling at. That way you can really make the, the proper tuning done for your CV as well as your uh, carburetor. A lot of people have a, like a little, um, I guess they have a little tack meter external that they put on. There we go. It's in there now. Now it's getting, uh, it's getting its power and it's getting its ground and it's getting its pulse signal, which is AC and add it with the ignition trigger wire. So let's go and fire this one up and let's see how it shows the RPM, ready? There we go. There we go, look at that. I'm holding the scooter down, but I'll, tr I'll try to go, but there we go. Dropping it. Well, you can hear it's dropping. Everything's working beautifully, so that's it. That's pretty much how you wire back or fix back if you have one of those recognition coil with a built-in spark plug. You want to go ahead and wire that blue wire that from the pickup as well as to the ignition direct ignition coil both. I had it cross reference at one point. I had it to the direct ignition coil when I first installed the Banjing one, and I didn't have any spark because I didn't wire to the the pickup coil wire of the CDI. I, which you figure both of those were kind of co-jointed, but they weren't. So that's it right there. And our next video, we're going to go and show you how to wire the alarm system. We're going to figure out ourselves. All right, Michael with NCY Store. Thank you guys for watching.